Hi guys, welcome to the shop. Uh, kind of trying to do a little explanation on what jaw lift is. Now that's basically just how much this part moves with the vise. Now see, it didn't move there, but I'm gonna clamp on it. And when you get it tight, it'll move, you know, between two and five thousandths. So we're at two and a half thou exactly. Let me look again. Yep, just shy of two and a half thou. So that's not actually too bad. That is for a lot of jobs acceptable. But what you have to do, because that picked it up off the parallels, is the long and the short of it is you're going to have to hit it with a hand. And basically keep doing that until it's seated on both parallels. And you can see now, I'm not quite back down to zero, but I'm, I'm, I'm within half a thousandth. So I'm like half a thou shy of where we started, but across the part, I'm not far out, just cranking the table from point to point. This part is now within about half a thousandth, which for vice work isn't bad. Uh, there's a couple other ways around it, which I will demonstrate now. Some people like to use rod between the fixed jaw and the part. I'm a little eh on that. It works, but you don't completely eliminate jaw lift. You still have to tap it. Now, for this demonstration, just because it makes my life a little bit easier, I'm not perfectly centering the rod. Swing the indicator back over. Zero it. See, we tighten on the part, we only got a thousandth of an inch of jaw lift now. But we're still floating on both parallels, so I have to tap it back in place. So yeah, you can see... I can't get it tapped back down. I think what's happening is it's just rolling back up. So that's an option. I've never actually tested this with an indicator, but I think we're going to be pretty much back where we started. Um, even though we're floating on the parallel, which I mean, let's, you know what? The indicator doesn't lie. Let's move the knee, see what happens or move the saddle. So yeah, we're, we're actually, the part is this now cocked this way, so I'm not okay with that solution. The other one's a ball bearing. I'm kind of in the Bridgeport Vices. This proves what I've already believed, which is just tap the part down. Don't fuss with stuff in between the jaws, unless it's out of square. Now, if the part's out of square, this rod will help you correct for that. But in this case, we're just trying to counter jaw lift. I'm not trying to accommodate squareness because this is just a demonstration, but this is already sufficiently perpendicular that I'm not terribly concerned with its perpendicularity. I'm just concerned with jaw lift. Now, another option on this, if your part allows for it, so you don't even have to concern yourself with jaw lift and repeatability, is work everything above the vise. So you can hit one, two, three, four, five sides and just take a slitting saw and pop it off the top. That's another option. Um, stare it, 54 hold downs are also a thing if your part accommodates it. In this case, it doesn't. Um, it's Jaw lift is basically solved by hitting the part with a hammer, whether you like it or not. It's you want gentle taps, so 
<clears throat> multiples of three, what I tend to do is one, two, three. And that will usually get you close to seated, but it isn't. And you're just gonna have to hit it until you're happy with where it is. And what's funny sometimes too, when you correct that, now this parallel is floating because now the part's cocked this way. So yeah, sometimes you actually have to hit it really delicately. So on small stuff, I won't even swing the hammer. I'll just go, and that's sometimes what you need. But the tighter you have the vise, kind of the harder you have to hit it. And it's just your parallels don't lie. You know, feel for a gap on both sides. I'll take a feeler gauge for something where it really matters and stick a feeler gauge in both sides to make sure the part isn't cocked because that's faster than running an indicator over it. There's a bunch of different ways to do this. This is just the way I've been doing it. And it's if you're ever having parts that are out of square, this is where you should start looking. And what's helped me a lot too with precision is I'll run an indicator over the bottom of the vise this way, just moving the table. Because if you don't have the two nuts equally tight while you're tramming it, that can cause issues. So I'll actually have two indicators going while I'm tightening it. I'll have one to make sure this fixed jaw isn't moving and the vise isn't out of square this way. And I'll have another one on the floor of the vise to make sure I'm square this way. That's just, again, that's just the way I do it. It's not always strictly necessary. Like for most things, you'll be within a thousandths on your X axis, just feeling the bolts are equally tight, but that's not always the case. Um, it doesn't work on this vise because these T-nuts are pretty worn. But I hope this guys helps you guys if you're having any struggles with your vise and you definitely can still do good parts on these really old vices. It's just easier on a Kurt where jaw lift just isn't an issue. Like I said, this vice will move between two and five thousandths, depending on how you tighten the part. Uh, what actually, you know what, this is interesting. If I keep my thumb here and just put a little downward pressure while I'm tightening the vice, that does seem to help. But thanks for watching. I hope you like, comment, and subscribe, and have a lovely rest of your day.